Hello friends, this video on wastewater story part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So, now we understood how the sewage gets carried to the sewage treatment plant. So, that part is clear now. But now the next question is, how is sewage treatment done? What happens inside the sewage treatment plant that the wastewater gets converted into clean water? So, what magic happens inside? So now we are going to discuss about sewage treatment in detail. So sewage needs to be treated in sewage treatment plants before disposal because we cannot dispose the wastewater with all the harmful chemicals and pesticides and paints and uh, harmful microorganisms into water directly that will pollute the water of that entire water body. So that is why we first take them into the sewage treatment plant where all the harmful substances are being removed and then the clean water is disposed into the water bodies. So this process of sewage treatment inside a plant is carried out in four major stages and these are called preliminary treatment, primary treatment, secondary treatment and tertiary treatment. So these are the four different stages in which the entire process of sewage treatment happens. However, uh, this uh, stages might be different in different sewage treatment plants. So in some sewage treatment plants, the preliminary treatment and the primary treatment, they are both fused together and it is called as primary treatment. In some sewage treatment plants, they really do not mention tertiary treatment separately. So in, in some of the plants, they just have two stages, primary treatment and secondary treatment. But actually, if you break it down into uh, proper four stages so these are the four stages which through which the sewage uh, is uh, sewage is passed through so that it can get converted into clean water so let us look at the entire uh, wastewater treatment plant stepwise as i said so the first one is preliminary treatment and in preliminary treatment the sewage is passed through bar screens and then grit and sand removal tanks now we will discuss about each of these in detail so you see this is the preliminary treatment where you have the bar screens and the grit and uh, sand removal tanks this is followed by primary treatment where you have water clarifiers and they further help in clarifying water removing dust and dirt from water which is followed by secondary treatment where we have aeration tanks here aerobic microorganisms uh, do a wonderful job uh, in cleaning up the water and finally this is followed by tertiary treatment which is like final cleaning up of water and here we make use of chemicals like chlorine uh, or other disinfectants to do the final round of cleaning and at the end of tertiary treatment what we get is a clean water so it is like very much clean and it is so clean that you can just dispose it off directly into the rivers. So you see it's it's a wonderful uh, mechanism in order to reuse wastewater. Now if we are able to reuse wastewater in this way, we are actually going to you know provide water to a lot of people who are facing water scarcity. And therefore it is very very important that uh, sewage should always be treated before it is being disposed of into a water body. So now let us start with each treatment one by one. So let, we'll first talk about the preliminary treatment where we will discuss about the bar screens. So what are bar screens? So this is the stage where the entire sewage which contains a huge amount of dust, dirt, harmful chemicals, harmful substances, solid particles, everything is there and that entire uh, wastewater is being passed through uh, a, a device like this where you have, you see, rod like structures. You have bars here see bar like structures rod like structures so when you pass the sewage through this all the solid particles get stuck so kind of filtered so the solid bigger solid particles if the solid particles are very tiny particles they will anyways pass through but if they are big particles they will get stuck and this step is for removing the larger objects and larger objects could be plastic could could be packets it could be sticks cans ropes now it is quite surprising that people throw these kind of things also in the sink because normally in sink you will have um, that um, that porous structure because of which bigger objects will not be able to pass through the sink but a lot of people they uh, flush a lot of substances like uh, tissues uh, sticks plastics packets so all these are flushed 
So when you flush all these things, they actually reach the sewerage and through the sewerage, it comes to the sewage treatment plant. So at the very first step, all larger objects are being removed. So that is the first round of cleaning water. Now from bar screens, the sewage is now passed on to the grit and sand removal tank. So here you have a big tank like this where uh, the water is not allowed to move very fast. So the speed of the incoming waste water is slowed down. Now when the speed is slowed down, it's like water spends a lot of time in this tank. And when you allow water to spend a lot of time here, what happens is the heavier particles which is present in that water, for example, sand and grit. So these kind of particles, they tend to settle down. So after some time, what do you observe is a lot of uh, undesirable substances which were present in the water in the form of sand or grit, they are all settled at the bottom and therefore the clear water can be taken up from the above. So that is the purpose of grit and sand removal tank. So here smaller particles like sand and grit are removed. And what is this process termed as like uh, if you leave a liquid, a liquid which can also contain some solid particles, when you leave it undisturbed for some time, what happens? The heavier particles settle down at the bottom and that concept is known as, that property is known as sedimentation. and the substances which settle down at the bottom that is termed as the sediment. So here also the same concept of sedimentation works in a grit and sand removal tank. And for sedimentation to take place, we need to lower the speed of the incoming water because if water passes through this tank very fast, if it keeps flowing through this tank very fast, it will not get enough time for the sand and grit to settle down. So therefore we reduce the speed of the water. So the water flows very slowly through this tank and then gradually the heavier particles will settle down at the bottom. So this is the second round of physical removal. Now when we talk about this entire uh, process of sewage treatment, we will see that sewage treatment is not only about physically removing unwanted particles, it involves physical physical removal of particles, it also involves biological treatment where living organisms will help in removing impurities. It also involves chemical treatment where chemical substances are being used to remove the uh, unwanted substances. So that is why this treatment is a combination of physical treatment, chemical treatment and biological treatment. Now these two steps which, have, which we have discussed so far that is the bar screens and the grit and sand removal tank these are all physical treatment because here we are physically removing unwanted particles from the wastewater so we can say that these these steps are physical treatment but overall the entire process of sewage treatment is a physical chemical as well as biological treatment so this was the preliminary treatment thank you Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.